Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z SDCC-ish exclusive Shenron. This is exclusive edition, not SDCC exclusive, that's why I said ish, it just says exclusive edition. You might get another chance to pick this up if you're not going to the convention. They haven't said. I want to be clear, they haven't said that that's going to be the case, so those of you who are banking on it being the case, we don't know that. All we know is it doesn't say Comic-Con on the box, so it's possible, okay? Now this is the exact same release as before. It is just a repaint, it's a new color scheme. Those of you that hated the figure from before, you might hate it just as much now, but like the paint job. Those of you that loved it before, you might love this one and even like the paint job more or less. I don't know, but I'm gonna show you everything you need to know so you can decide if you wanna get it or get both or whatever you wanna do. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. Okay, so this figure stands about, I don't know, let's call it 11 inches in this pose. And that's the pose it's gonna be in. And that's gonna make it about 28 centimeters. Now, the reason I say it's gonna stay in this pose is because even though it's relatively well articulated, it's nowhere near enough to pose it. There's too many permanently curved pieces that it's gonna be in this iconic pose basically no matter what. Okay, so now let's do a quick question of the day. One of the biggest peop complaints people have had for this figure is the scaling. Obviously, it's never gonna be to scale. It can't be. Perunga's huge and he's still nowhere close to scale. Same thing with Ozaru Vegeta. So, how much does that bother you? To me, I would like it to be a little bit bigger, like just to keep it up with Perunga a little bit uh, in terms of figures, but it's never gonna be the right size. It's not even close. So it doesn't really matter to me. It matters that it's a good looking collectible, but you guys can let me know how you feel about that. Okay, so I'm looking at it. I think maybe I didn't peg that one joint in right there all the way. So hopefully it doesn't fall apart as we do this. I think I did though. Okay, so this one and this one. Let's, let, let's get them both on screen at once. We might lose focus for a second. I posed them not at the same time. So if they're even close to the same pose as far as what I have control over, it's just good luck. All right, that's, that's close enough. So like I said, they're the exact same thing, minus paint. This one is all flat colors. There's no shading or anything on it, which does take away from the look. It gives it a very anime look, but it probably should have some shading. Being as big as it is, it looks a little weird for it to just look like solid plastic, mostly. Uh, the red line work on this one wasn't very clean, and that detracted a little bit. And even the yellow paint job has a lot of weird scuffs and things in it, for mine at least. So that did detract from it quite a bit. Uh, this one doesn't have anywhere near the amount of issues this one has in terms of cleanliness. The red line work is very clean. I didn't notice any major blemishes in the yellow parts. And then the metallic on the green gives it that depth that this one's lacking. I still think we should have seen a little bit of shading maybe across the yellow uh, striations there, but the metallic on the on the green here does look great. The mouths are painted basically the same. The eyes are pretty close to the same. Uh, the brown for the horns, pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, it really just comes down to if you want a metallic one of this. The metallic looks great. Is it gonna look great on the shelf with all the other figures who don't have that much of this kind of look? I don't know. Uh, I'm personally saying this looks better, without a doubt. But I don't know if I'm gonna display it as much as I'm gonna display this one if it's up against other SH figure arts. I don't know, I don't have any of them out right now other than what I'm reviewing, so it's hard for me to say. In fact, let me grab, here. Let me grab a Goku. I have this guy handy. So him standing up against, uh, I don't know, I guess I could go either way. This one, maybe because it's more in, in like the same styling, but this one because it just looks so damn good and doesn't need the shading that it doesn't have. So I don't know, I guess I'm torn. You guys can answer that question of the day also. Which one would you display if you had both with your other figures? So yeah, the difference is, I basically covered that. I'll zoom in on the faces. Let me move it over so you can see actually. Give me a second here. These guys are a little, a little awkward to review. So yeah, the face is super clean. You can see up close what the shading looks like, or not the lack of shading, but the natural um, metallic reflection versus this one. Like I said, it does end up looking plasticky and flat, but eh, there's something to be said about that. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. You guys can tell me how you feel. 
So yeah, the articulation, if you wanna see the full articulation, I'm not gonna do it because it's really pointless. I'll show you that, it'll be in that review up at the top right corner, the original one. There's really no point in going over it. You can pose the arms, you can bend the mouth or open the mouth. That's about it. The way the stand works, the display stand, and the way his articulation is set up, this is the pose he's gonna be in other than head adjustments and arm adjustments. So that's that. Now the last thing I wanna talk about that's a little bit of a difference is the Dragon Ball section. Now this is just a piece that sits there. So if you wanna like string this guy up so you don't have this stand, you could definitely do that. Hang him from, the, from some fishing line and just set these on the shelf. That would be cool. Now this one comes with the dark gold balls and it does have, let me pull it out actually. All right, can we focus on this? I think we can. So this one has the dark gold balls, relatively dark yellow here. It's all flat except for the balls. They're metallic and we have like a hit of orange I guess, yeah, I guess you'd call it shading, starting in the center, and it does radiate up onto the spikes a little bit. Now this one, if I can grab it, be careful when you're doing this, guys, because you don't want the Dragon Ball effect part to get scratched by the tail, which is almost always in the way. Okay, I would, in, in fact, I would say put a little piece of plastic down there just to make sure it doesn't get scratched. Now this one has the same yellow-ish. It's a little bit glossier, the yellow. It's kind of metallic, and it doesn't have the orange shading. It's slight, sorry, it's out of, out of frame a little bit. It doesn't have the orange shading. It's a slightly brighter yellow, slightly metallic. And then obviously the Dragon Balls are meant to look like the uh, activated Dragon Balls. Now, the thing to remember is you can remove the Dragon Ball pieces here and use the actual Dragon Balls that we've gotten in the various figures. That's still a thing, so you can do that. But that's the biggest difference here. What I would suggest, maybe, maybe swapping them around. If you're gonna do both, I don't know. I don't know which one I like more. This one has the shading, obviously, but this one has the glossiness. So you could chop them around to whatever you feel like, but that is that is another difference. I think the activated balls look pretty cool, actually. So yeah, um, definitely nowhere near as nice an update as like 16 or the whole brand new Super Saiyan 2 Goku, but it is still, like it looks gorgeous. If you're into Dragon Ball enough, this is a cool looking piece. It's freaking cool being solid metallic. Does it really have a place in the collection? I don't know. You can't pose it. It doesn't have the same type of finish that we see normally on the figure arts because they don't all come in solid metallic, but it's also Shenron, so you can definitely make a case for it. It does look gorgeous being in the metallic green and having the scales on there. It looks wonderful. This definitely doesn't stand out anywhere near as much, but it might match the other figures better. That's really the most I can say about it. You guys can let me know how you feel about it in the comment section below. I can't really, I'm not gonna give it a rating or anything. It's the same figure with horrible posability, obviously, but it looks great. So I don't know, I'll just keep repeating the same stuff. So I'm gonna leave it there. I think it looks cool. I don't know how you guys feel about that. It's gonna be a really personal decision whether or not you wanna get one. Um, yeah, even having them both here, I can't decide which I would want. I guess it's the new one because it's metallic and cool. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, the last <laughs> the last thing I'll say, if I'm gonna put it in a, in a shelf with a bunch of other figure arts, I'll use this one. If it's gonna go on like a standalone area where I just want it to be like with one Goku or something like that, I'll pick this one because this one does look, this is an eye catcher. It's a conversation piece-ish. This one's definitely not, so I'll leave it at that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give it a thumbs down, and if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos almost every single day, and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. In the meantime, keep collecting.